Let's take a look at the breakdown voltage of insulators assignment. And I'll give you some helpful hints on solving these, not the answers though. And you need to write them out in sentence paragraph form to prepare for the unit test and the uh, final exam. So what we have here is the maximum voltage these various insulators can take before they suddenly are forced to conduct. Okay, so glass can take one million volts. A centimeter of glass can stop a million volts of electricity before it fails and conducts and is destroyed as a result. You don't really get them back intact. So let's take a look at question one. It says, if we have a wire and we have rubber insulation on it, which is good to 240,000 volts if it's a centimeter? I just rounded it to 250 for a reason. It's an easier number to work with. So if we have a one centimeter thick casing on the rubber, it's good for 250,000 volts. But if we switched it for glass, we would have one million volts of protection on that wire. So think about it. Let's say we needed 250,000 volts of insulation capacity, and that took one centimeter of rubber. How much glass would it take? So you can calculate and tell me how thick that casing would be if we switch to a better insulator. Now question two involves capacitors. And a capacitor is a device consisting of two metal plates that you put charges on. And since opposite charges attract, they will head towards each other. But we don't let them reach. We put an insulator in between. And what's going to happen now, like these lovers in prison movies where the guy's in prison and the girl visits and they're like, I love you. Oh, and they start like, and I've seen some movies where they kiss the glass. It's like, that's so gross. But you get the idea. They're pressed at the glass, desperate to get at each other. So they won't go anywhere. So capacitor is a great storage device. It doesn't make electricity, just stores it. And in practice, to keep them kind of small, what they do is they put the layer of metal a layer of insulator, a layer of metal, a layer of insulator, and then they roll it up like a sleeping bag. So when they're done, they, the capacitor is this shape, and it's a little like jelly roll of material. And I think that's enough for you to spot them on the circuit card. Can you see these rolled up sleeping bags, these water tanks for electricity? Well, they're everywhere. Look at them right here, 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 this giant one here. And if this one, if you touched it, stung, then this one's gonna kill. There's so, so many of them. Um, and there's even the plain uh, sort of small ones that consist of, where's my fingers there? Consist of just a disc, okay? How important are they? Well, let's look at this from an old uh, audio card and a power supply. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, twelve, thirteen, fourteen, fifteen, sixteen, seventeen, eighteen, nineteen, twenty, twenty-one, twenty-two, at least, twenty-three. All right, there's a lot of them on this circuit card. They're a very important device. Currently, most of them have mica as their insulator because you get two million volts per centimeter. Think about that. This circuit card, tops 12 volts inside of it. You need 12 volts of insulation. How thick is that mica insulator in there? But what's going to happen when we run out of mica, and we are, and we have to switch to glass? What's going to happen to the design of the circuit board when we need an insulator that's half as effective? Can you see any impact that would happen here? The next one is, let's assume air has an insulating capacity of 500 volts for a centimeter. Then, if air is that good of an insulator, how much voltage would it take to jump a four centimeter gap? Now, once the electrons jump the gap and you get your answer, is that the only voltage they can jump or the minimum voltage they can jump, okay? Next question, high voltage towers, these things, you see them across country and they look like this 
and then you see this wire and the wire heads off to the next tower like that and it's clearly above ground now obviously they've lifted the wire well above ground because that wire has 250,000 volts in it we got to keep it away from you but the wire is not insulated and the reason is kind of simple rubber has an insulating capacity from the previous question 250,000 volts in a centimeter 250,000 volt line would need a centimeter of rubber around it. You could do the math. Put a centimeter thick rubber on a wire, stretch it a kilometer long, and how does rubber behave outdoors for year after year after year? I think you realize the rubber is not really a good idea. So, why instead of rubber have they gone ahead and instead move the wire way out on this boom arm, put it on a drop down made out of glass that's about a meter long and then put the bare naked wire there. Why is that a better choice than encasing it in rubber? Okay. And some of them can reach 400,000 volts and they're talking about one million volt line. Why are they using that instead? Now let's take an engineering approach. Let's suppose you're an engineer and you decide you want to see a Van de Graaff machine that shoots 100 centimeter sparks. Because currently the one in the classroom only shoots 30 centimeters. That's impressive enough in the classroom. But let's say you're making a science center and you want, no, we need a meter size spark for people to see it for the size of our room. What would be the minimum voltage we would need on a Van de Graaff machine to generate a 100 centimeter spark? Well, what's preventing the spark? Air. We deliberately want the air to not conduct till we reach the 100 centimeter mark. So the question is, to make your best case example, like you want it to work no matter how bad the day is. So which voltage should you choose? 800 volts a centimeter, which would be when air is its moistest, or 3,000 volts per centimeter. Which one of these values would give you the minimum, the minimum voltage, right? Because we want to make sure it works no matter what. So which one of these voltages would be the worst case scenario? And you'd have to design it for that so it would always at a minimum throw 100 centimeter sparks. And that's something an engineer would do, okay? Then number six, if we look back at the others, which includes question two and question um, four, considering that paper and glass are better insulators than rubber, wouldn't it make sense to use paper covering on all our wires? They used to. In the 1920s and 1930s, before a lot of rubbers were in, many wires were encased in paper. Why don't we use paper or glass as an insulator? Do they have another property that makes them very poor choices for wiring insulation, despite the fact they are better than rubber at not letting electricity through. And the advanced one is not really an advanced question at all for the Van de Graaff. Can you understand why now the Van de Graaff, the ball is on this pole? That a Van de Graaff machine would not be very effective if it was designed like that. And if you ever went to a lab one day and you saw a Van de Graaff machine that look like this, that even Mr. Kalati would not touch that machine. And if you can figure that out, you know everything you need to know about insulators and their effects.